Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can master the pen tool inside a Vectinator, either on your Mac or on your iPad. Both apps are the same, and both of them are completely free. Before we get into it, make sure you press that red subscribe button, turning on post notifications. It means the world to me when you do that, but not only that, it actually lets you know when I've uploaded a new video like this one. Now, don't be afraid of this tutorial. The pen tool isn't as hard as you think, as long as you follow these basic basic rules and watch the end of this video, you'll be absolutely fine. So let's get straight in to the start of this tutorial. This tutorial is brought to you by Vectinator. Okay, so go ahead and open up Vectinator, obviously, as the start. We're going to then go ahead and make a new document. I always like to work in A4 for a poster, which is generally a good poster size. Now, when you open this, you'll realize that there's not much difference aside from this to the Mac one, because it is all basically just the same app. This is just inside of the iPad. What we want to do, though, is want to use the pen tool. The pen tool can be found over here. Now, I'm going to give you a little rundown first before I give you a little task or something that you can do. So what you want to do is just play around with the pen tool, see how it works, why it does what it does. This is a really good explorative way of working it out. Well, basically, if you don't know, the pen tool is just a path. This is how vector artwork is made. It's done through equations and mathematics, and this is how you get it so that your work is never pixelated because you could zoom in on that and it'll never pixelate. Now, this is actually a shape that I've just created. So we're going to go into the style and we're going to bring the opacity of the fill up and we're actually going to choose a different color. Let's choose a crazy blue. I'm going to get rid of my style options and go to my select tool over there. So as you can see here, I've got my shape and you can tell it's a shape I can transform it i can keep it up and down now with transforming inside of vectinator if you use gestures with this other hand over here and hold one finger you will keep the aspect ratio this is basically like holding shift if you use two fingers it won't do anything and three fingers don't do anything on here either so if you're trying to transform something but you want to keep it in its actual aspect ratio so you don't change it you don't want it to do this put a finger down and you'll find it works a lot better. And if you're wondering what all these white spots are on my hand, I've been painting and it won't come off. Shame on me. So once you've played around with it a bit more and you know kind of what you're doing in here, go ahead and play around with the toolbar over here. Over here, what we'll need to know for this tutorial is this one, which is the select option. You also need to know the direct or node selection. And then you've obviously got your pencil here. Now that I've taught you the very basics of the actual transforming and the pen tool and you had a little play around with it, we're going to go ahead and import an image to trace over. Now, Vectinator is very good at this. So all you need to do is go to your photographs that you've got, find something that you've drawn before. I'm going to go ahead and draw classic on here because that's a pretty good and hard one to do. So I'm going to go ahead and basically import that in to Vectinator. And we do this by going up here to the top right and then going to the photos, camera roll, and we're gonna bring it in. And when you press it, you'll get it there. I'm gonna use this orange to go ahead and rotate it. And again, if you put a finger down, it will constrain it to 45 degrees. Then I'm gonna spin my canvas around. And again, I'm gonna transform this up by holding with my finger to keep the constraints correct. There we go. So now we've got our thing in there. Go into your layers and you'll see your image there. We're gonna go ahead and basically change the opacity of this layer. And then you might not see it take place, but if you just do this and like scroll in and out, it will work just fine. We're going to go ahead and lock that layer. We don't want that layer to be played around with. When you lock it, you can no longer touch it or transform it. It's just locked. Go ahead and create a new layer on the top by pressing this button. And we're going to be working inside of this one to select this layer. Once your image is in and it's locked and you can't play with it, go ahead to the top here and then go to your pen tool. And we're going to get rid of the fill. You do this by clicking that eye until you see this little part here and it should have a red line streaked through it. The stroke width, I want it to be about a point and a bit. So we'll keep it there. So the first thing about pen tooling, especially with typography, I've talked about it before, is that you've got to keep the handles horizontal and vertical. So you need to keep them kind of like this. So each handle is basically up and right or left. So up, and across so you're boxing it in you want it to be like a box and we do that by going through the extremes of the curves now in this tutorial i'm going to give you basically a rundown on how to do this just so you can practice but it does take a lot of practice to know which 
point goes somewhere else. So go to your pen tool and then we're going to start off with the top up here. I know there's going to be a point up here and I know I need to go to the left. So when I go over to the left, you can see that my handles are going everywhere. So go ahead and put two fingers down. And when you do this, it will constrain it. And we want it to be horizontal like this, constrained horizontally. Let go and you've got your first anchor point and your handles. Now I know that I want another point here as well because that's the extreme of the curve that we've got here and I want it to curve this way. So I'm gonna give this a point here and as you can see a black line has appeared. Now what we need to do is again use two fingers and basically pull down like so so we keep it horizontal and vertical. Now when I'm here I know that this handle where my pen is at the bottom is way too long. So what I'm gonna do is put a third finger down. And when I do that, Vectinator knows by the gesture that it only wants me to use or to bring up or transform this other handle. So hold with three fingers and bring it up to where you need it to be, which is gonna be around about here. And let go. And when you've done that, you've created a perfect curve. Now I'm gonna to go to my direct selection tool or my node tool over here. I'm gonna select both of these and you can see the handles. We can go ahead and make some adjustments here. So I can select this, but again, if I select it, it's gonna go everywhere. So I'm gonna keep it at two, but then not only that, I only want to affect this side, the actual handle that I'm using. So I'm gonna use three fingers to get the exact point that I want. Same with this, I can go ahead and edit it anytime. Now you don't have to do that for every line. You can normally just go ahead and plot your points, which means just basically click and drag at certain areas and then go ahead and refine it later, which is what we're going to do. So now that you've got this nice curve, we're gonna go ahead and select this node down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull down. You can see there, it's got a bit of haywire again, but we'll bring it back up. Then I'm gonna go down here to this part here to the C. And then now I'm going to roughly go ahead and plot everything. So this plotting here is basically me going to the left, to the right, and you'll see it'll look very strange, but this is where the handles need to be. It's a very odd way of doing it, but it's actually the least stressful way, in fact, of doing it because you're just getting the points down that you need. And once you've got the points down that you need, you can worry about the other things later on. Now that looks awful, right? It's, it's all bumpy and the lines are everywhere, but it will give you a good illustration of what the pen tool does. You can see that I've got horizontal and vertical anchor points on each area. Now what we can do with this is we can actually go ahead and edit each handle to be correct. So starting from the top, all we wanna do is select this anchor. We're gonna use three fingers. When we use three fingers, it's gonna just use that anchor point and bring it in on that handle. We're then gonna do the same for this handle over here. So you select it, use three fingers, and it'll lock it in place. Select this one, bring it back out a bit, maybe bring it in a bit. You can see this handle is going way too far down. So we do the same, we bring it back up. And we basically use this as like a really therapeutic way of creating letter forms. This handle here, you can hold with one finger when you're creating it and it will create an off cut, an off joint basically, where your handle doesn't follow the other handle that it's connected to. So I've done this for purely ease of use. When you're using the direct selection tool or the no tool, you can actually select the anchor point that you wanna work with and change the positioning. Now, if you wanna add another anchor point like I'm gonna do here, just double click with the no tool here and then make sure you've got the handles by pressing it. Not every handle has to be vertical and horizontal, but it does help. Now this one will need a lot more work done to it to make it look good, because we've got this one down here obviously as well. So we move this, we move this, move this. You can see here that I'm using all the gestures that come with this Vectinator app to create something good. And it does just take practice and time to get each letter correct. Okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get it over for here for this time. But what about the next one? So all we need to do is invectinate it. Instead of switching over here from one tool to the other, just double tap with your pencil. And then if you've got the second generation Apple Pencil, it will switch between two tools, which is very clever. For something like this with a very long neck, you just need to go ahead and drag from the top find the extreme point at the bottom 
and use two fingers to bring that down. As you can see, it's not horizontal at the top, but it follows the curve. Now, when I've got the curve just right, I'll put my third finger down and drag it back up. I don't want this handle to go further than the bottom of this L. So I'm going to bring it up to about halfway. And then I'm going to zoom in and then do my horizontal anchor point. And when I've got the curve I like, three fingers bring back up like so. And then now if I just press like this, it's going to create just a normal point. Down here, I'm going to go ahead because there's a curve there. Do this. Three fingers pull back. Oh, I went a bit wrong then. That's okay. We can fix that. And if you're finding that it's way too thick, if the stroke's too thick, you'll find it hard to see what you're doing. So you can just lower it if you like. But for this illustration, I'm showing it so you can see. So you can see that I've got the curve that I like. I'm going to bring that up with the three finger point just there. And then up here, because it's got a cool slope, we're just going to use an angled version. Now you can see that this line here is coming up to the top, but I need it to sort of div it down. So take this anchor point here with the node tool and you'll see it'll move both of them. But if we add one finger, it will break the anchor point from itself. Same with this one. We want it to sort of break from itself to come down. Then when we go back to the pen tool, it will create that little slide that we need there. Now for anything else like the A, which I'm going to show you in this, all you need to do is basically use a shape because we've got a circle there. So I'm going to go ahead and use a circle here. I'm going to create one just like so. And we're going to go ahead and manipulate it. Maybe use the selection tool to do this. I'm going to manipulate it like this so it fits. We're just trying to get it so it looks correct. Still working in the stroke mode like so. Now what we want to do, now what we want to do is we want to copy this circle. So press copy up there and paste, and then we're going to go ahead and transform this again. So we just go ahead, manipulate it like so, like so. And there we go. We've got the, basically the two shapes. Now what happens if these shapes go ahead and turn it into a fill where you can see there, it doesn't look that great, does it? So what we need to do is when they're in a fill state, select them both, go to path, and then we need to go ahead and press this one, which is minus front, which will minus that shape. Then we can go back now and go ahead and add the stroke back in and you can see that it works there. And the rest is basically just the same as we keep going. As we keep going along with this, it takes a while, but you basically keep refining it until it looks perfect. But it starts with a good sketch. I'm going to do it in like normal speed for me, just so you can see just what I normally do with Vectinator. So this is basically my job and how it works most of the time. But this is how I like to fit my anchor points, making sure they look good and decent. Bring that back down. Don't be afraid to zoom right in. It's all editable, that's the great thing about this. And there you go, that was how quick it was. Now if I go ahead and select all of these with the selection tool, we're gonna to go to the style over here, take away the stroke. We can see there what we've got. We can go ahead and get rid of that sketch layer. If we just move the L in a bit, and the C in a bit, you can see that I've made very good progress on the vectorizing of the classic. Well, there you go, guys. That is the tutorial done and over with. And I hope you learned something new about the pen tool, but not only that, about Vectinator. Vectinator has actually sponsored this tutorial video to show you a bit more about the app and to basically get a designer like myself using it in front of you so you guys can learn from creatives around the world. Now, if you have an iPad or a Mac, then Vectinator is completely free. You do not have to pay for it. And you can get it from the link down below in the description. I just want to thank Vectinator for sponsoring this video. And if you haven't done so already, please press that red subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss out on a Vectinator tutorial, which I'll be uploading them about twice a month for the next few months. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye.